Hi guys, and welcome back to the 12 Days of Foundation. I am testing out 12 foundations over 12 days. If you have missed any of my previous reviews, I will link to them all down below. Today it is all about a new drugstore foundation from Revlon. It is their Photo Ready Insta Foundation, and there is a huge cult following behind Revlon Colorstay. I absolutely love it. I reviewed the um, kind of older formula last year, so I'll link to that down below, and I do have the new one with the pump, which I do plan to review, but I thought I would test this one out because it is pretty brand new and you may be curious about it, so let's go ahead and get started. This foundation launched fairly recently and has that whole Instagram thing going on the Ulta website. It says it's supposed to make you look as good in person as you do online. It's supposed to have a flawless finish. You're getting 0.91 fluid ounces in here, which is just under the average size of a foundation. It's going to retail anywhere in between like $17 to $25, definitely up there in price. Comes in 12 different shades. I'm going to be wearing the shade 400 Caramel today. I wear 370 Toast in the Color Stay, which is amazing, by the way, one of the best drugstore foundations foundations out there, um, but they don't seem to have it in this range, which is kind of annoying. I wish they had um, more directly transferred, but I guess there is more shades in the color stay than there is in this, so perhaps they do transfer more evenly in the other shades. I just kind of got missed on that one. Uh, it has a sponge applicator on the top, and it does recommend that you do use this on the Ulta website, so I've te tested this foundation before, but I haven't tested the sponge applicator, so we'll try it. I will say it definitely is messy. To get the product up, you twist it, and it comes up through the sponge, which is great in practice if you're using the sponge but if you're not using the sponge it kind of ends up absorbing product and you're not blending it into your skin something else to consider with the sponge applicator is a lot of the sponges that I use and that you use probably are wet and therefore they kind of absorb less product they get a little bit softer and that's not something that you're doing here and this kind of application and packaging is what I'm going to dub I think boardroom makeup. It's like a boardroom conversation. It never makes it to anybody's vanity. It can't. It's impossible. I mean, if you love this applicator, please let me know. Let me know why you love it and your reasonings for enjoying this over like a brush, fingers, or sponge because I'm so curious to know. But this to me seems like the kind of thing that someone is like, it's going to be genius. It's going to revolutionize. But it's like if you can just make a really beautiful foundation for a good price, people are going to appreciate that. We don't need like to break the mold here. I appreciate the the research, but it just doesn't seem practical to me. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and put this on my skin. I will prime this half of my face and we will see how it looks. So let's try the actual sponge on this side. I mean, maybe it'll prove me wrong. It's not horrible, but I don't like it. <laughs> so moving right along. It's, it's actually of all the like gimmicky foundation kind of spongy things, it's actually not bad, but if you're at all used to using a brush or a sponge, I don't think you're gonna like it. Maybe if you're in a pinch, if you're like traveling and forget your brush or something. I'm gonna build it up slightly. It claims to have um, medium buildable coverage, a natural finish, it's supposed to soften and blur imperfections, and it has an SPF of 20 and says it's supposed to wear all day. Something I did want to note, I noticed at um, Shoppers recently, was that the, the Revlon display had kind of been like overhauled, and they had testers of the majority of their foundation, uh, sorry, the majority of their line actually, so foundations, lipsticks, everything, which I think is awesome, because especially in Canada, returning drugstore makeup is a hassle and sometimes impossible, so it is really nice to see um, testers, so I really appreciate that they're doing that. So I'm gonna leave the coverage here. I actually really like the way that it looks on the skin. It looks incredibly natural, blended super, super easily. So as you can see, I've built it up to about a light medium coverage. I didn't want to build it up anymore. I'm really happy with the way that it looks. I don't need everything to be super full coverage. It has a little bit of a more natural skin-like finish, but leaning matte for sure. If you have a dry skin type, I don't know that you would love this, and it doesn't seem to claim it's for any skin type in particular, but it says it does kind of conform to your skin. So it does look really beautiful. It feels really lightweight. I wish it was like a smidge lighter, but I really do think the finish is quite beautiful on the skin. So I'm going to go ahead and take some photos, see how Insta ready I am, and I will be right back. Okay, I am back and ready for Instagram. As you can see, I have done the rest of my makeup. Everything I'm wearing will, as always, be listed down below. I do want to give a quick shout out to this lipstick, though, and this lipstick line in general. It is from Revlon. It's the Ultra HD Gel Lipsticks. These do not get enough talk at all. I will link to a blog post down below where I've swatched some of them. I'm wearing one of them now. I think that they are just so beautiful, comfortable, just a really good lipstick that nobody talks about, probably because it's not a liquid lipstick, but anyways, 
they're great. Moving on to the foundation, I think it looks really good on my skin. That being said, I think if you have any texture on your skin, I definitely don't see any blurring properties, so you still would need to reach for a smoothing primer, but overall, I do really like the way that it feels on my skin. It doesn't feel heavy, it doesn't look cakey. I definitely think if you have a drier skin type, this will be too matte for you. It definitely does dry down quite matte, and even if you have a normal skin type, you may want to reach for something like um, kind of like a moisturizing primer or perhaps a setting spray just at the end that has a little moisture in there just to bring back a little bit of the dewiness to, to your skin. I personally don't mind starting out at this point because I know my skin will continue to get oily throughout the day so this feels perfectly fine to me. It looks really really good. As for photos, when I took a photo here in my studio lighting with no other makeup on, I thought it looked good. It doesn't look um, heavy on the skin. It definitely looks super natural especially where I'm not wearing any concealer. You can still see my freckles. It looks really good on the skin. Moving on to when I turned off my ring light, you're getting a little bit of a white cast, but nothing crazy. There is an SPF of 20 in here. And then when I turned off all of my lights in essentially a dark room with flash, again, you do get some flashback, but it's not horrible. So I, I don't think it's it's too bad. I mean, once you powder it in bronze, I think it would look pretty good. And as I've mentioned a thousand times over, it's very rare that I'm taking photos in a completely dark room with just foundation on. So, so I'm going to go ahead about my day and I will check back with you in some natural lighting. Okay, I've had the foundation on for a few hours and I think that things actually look really, really good. I'm not gonna blot, I'm just going to powder the center of my face. I do feel like it has darkened or oxidized ever so slightly, but other than that, I'm super impressed with um, the way it feels on my skin. It still feels really lightweight. It doesn't feel oily at all. And realistically, I didn't even need to powder, but I figured I might as well just to kind of see if that helps um, elongate the wear throughout the day. So I'm gonna check back with you at the end of the night, but so far, so good. I am back and I am super, super impressed. I've had this foundation on for quite some time and I had a little bit of a, a lower key day today. Did a whole bunch of meal prepping. It's a Sunday while I'm filming this and I ended up taking a nap. I swear I don't nap all the time, but just really, really tired and it was like feeling Christmassy. Today, so I took a like, nice little nap and everything has held up really well. Definitely a little bit shiny, more shiny because of my lighting. It definitely kind of like reflects light, but it looks really good considering I didn't blot earlier today. I just powdered and what I noticed about it, even though it looks a little bit shiny on the skin, it feels matte on my skin. It doesn't feel uncomfortable or oily. Um, so I'm really, really impressed. I have only worn this foundation once before and I did like it, but I didn't wear it for a super, super long time. So I really, really like the way that this held up. The primed and unprimed sides are about the same. I am just going to powder down the center of my face slightly so I can show you how it looks once uh, it's been powdered again. But I would definitely continue to wear this. I think it looks really good. I was trying to figure it out if it had oxidized on my skin and I don't think that it has. The shade is a little bit deep for me. I wish they did have toast because that's a much better match. If I had to compare this to the Revlon Colorstay, I haven't actually worn that one in a little while so I can't say for sure, but it definitely has less coverage and I don't think that this one would be um, dry skin friendly necessarily. But I definitely really, really like this one. The only real downfall for me is the application. I just wish it came in a pump. It's a really great foundation and, and the sponge is just not necessary. Even if it didn't have a pump, we could just do an open bottle for all I care. But that is a little bit of a downfall for me. The price range and the shade range isn't great either, but the actual foundation itself is really, really beautiful. I don't necessarily think it lives up to like the Insta Filter blurring claims, but there's no foundation really that like blurs all my imperfections anyways. And I have a lot of active breakouts right now. So I'm just looking for something that's going to stay on my skin, that's going to be comfortable. It's not going to patch away. There's not a ton of transfer. It didn't oxidize and it feels really comfortable on my skin. Definitely a light to medium coverage. I definitely wouldn't want to build this up anymore. It can, it does have the potential to look a little heavy on the skin and not get to full coverage. So you're not even getting that benefit of full coverage. But overall, I definitely really, really like this one. Curious to hear your thoughts. If you have tried it, let me know down below. Stay tuned for another foundation review tomorrow. And thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Samantha Jane YT, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!